Do it. Greg's thinking. Let's try the other Spit one. Spit it out. Don't swallow it. The arc is thinking. Oh, God. Do you think it got that? <laughs> Spit it, it out. Swallow. Don't swallow it. Take two. Our... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do we Spit need another one? Swallow the other. Do we, do we need another one oh, for no. coverage? Yeah, I mean, can we make sure we have one? F- make sure it's in the clear, right? Oh God! <laughs> okay, get it out, man! Don't swallow. <laughs> See that again? There's laughing all over it. I don't know how I'm going to use that. <laughs> anyway, it's the 10th of February, 2022. I'm Commander Jan Trax, and this is the Loose Screws Podcast. Tonight, I am. Well, I'm, that was going to be a hard edit. Wow, Justin, <laughs> way to way to make this hard on yourself. It's the Loose Screws Podcast theme music now. Go. Okay. (laughs) And tonight I'm joined by uh, Chig Data Nurgle. Everyone say hi at the same time. Hi. Hi. Hey, that was pretty good. All right. So... Um, as we were about to start this podcast, it was voiced to me that what is there even to talk about? So, <laughs> which one of you wants to host this podcast then? <laughs> um, no, I think there, Not there's, it. A, <laughs> there's a couple of things to talk about. Um, there's a little bit of stuff from dev. There's some stuff that was going on in game. And I'm actually going to prattle more about game testing because I have... Um, since I last spoke to the audience there, I, I was totally unable to reliably repeat the thing I was asking everybody to test. So I'm glad that nobody ran out and did all that testing that I was asking for. Um, so I'm asking now for something much, much simpler. So I'll get to that a little later. And um, because I do think there's something there. It's just not exactly the way I imagined it. So um what's 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 up first should we talk about the squad there's actually been a heck of a lot of stuff going on in the squad huh there has there has okay let's do a squad briefing wait a minute we need to go around and introduce everybody Incoming priority message. cut it off cut it off stop okay. we're off to an amazing start you're right i just <laughs> i just completely fucking blew wait, it you know we're supposed are... to endear ourselves to the audience by you know humanize ourselves by talking about our lives who wants to go first well we just we just humanized ourselves by you Dropping our pants on a live recording and messing it up. <laughs> that was that was prime time for a record scratch sound bite. <laughs> yeah. There, I don't have that ready. See, that's uh, how prepared I am. I uh, wonder if I can live, stick one in in post. We'll live see. recording sounds oh. kind of like an oxymoron to me. Just, just <laughs> <laughs> uh, we would call this live off the floor. Well, it's, it's, just it's on recorded, the floor at the moment. But whatever we get when we push record, that's what's going out. So. Yep. Okay. And it will be on the floor if it keeps going the way it's going so far. <laughs> hey, um, who wants to talk? Hey, Nurgle, I, I, I subject you to going first. How have you been doing? Uh, <laughs> pretty good. Um, I know uh, people love the, the stories I tell about work, and we had one this week where <laughs> we had a dude in a 20-yard dump truck full of gravel decide it would be a really good idea to to drive that truck across an open field after three days of rain. Love it. Which, Love it. which ended ended about the way you would expect it to end with him up to, you know, all six axles in the mud and a <laughs> you know and a large one of those big tow trucks that's for semis that they had to call to try to get him out who rolled up and the first words out of his mouth were, How the hell did you get in there? <laughs> <laughs> way to go. But yeah. It's so good. Of course, and the the field he was in was the middle of an irrigated football field. So, yikes! So that's uh, a big problem. A lot of damage. It's a lot of damage. It's yeah, that's irrigation system, damage. sod, all the other stuff that goes with fixing that field. Because he decided oh he uh, he needed to take a shortcut to where he was going to dump that load. So. Wow. And that was phrasing. Are we doing phrasing still? I don't remember. No, we can't. <laughs> You can read into that whatever you want. I was totally not implying he's full of shit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he was carrying gravel and fertilizer. Yeah, other than that, uh, well, that's true. Although we do get loads of that too. But uh, other than that, we've been doing some BGS in game. We had some 
some wars to fight. We'll talk about some of that once we get to that segment. And we've been having fun this week playing. Yeah, sweet. Data, what's up with you, man? Hey, doing good. Um, uh, in real life, nothing, nothing too special going on. Um, normal work stuff, in game, mostly building factories. <laughs> I'm on to uh, <laughs> rubber. I'm I'm watching rubber? Uh, rubber production going on right now. Wow! And totally really, can't do anything with that one. Yeah, I know. I left a big. <laughs> Heavy <laughs> silence there, you guys. Just kind of. I don't grab the down, easy ones. But, all right. <laughs> it's when had had a lot of fun in our last BGS war. Had a couple of nights that I don't know if that was if that had stopped before last week's podcast or not. All all the days run together for me now. Yeah, that ran through the weekend. Where I'm, where I'm yeah, where I'm home like all the time. Time time loses meaning. We are all <laughs> but dust, dust in the wind. Yeah, it's going to be one of those nights, isn't it? Nice. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like it. Uh, we've been up. We've been up two tracks. Oh me? Okay. Um, well, so it's been a. I, I had my week on my other podcast there, but it, so it's been, it's been a minute. But since I last talked to you, we had an ice storm that um, shut down everything for Thursday and Friday. Uh, so with the girls home and everything that was for home from school, that, that always makes me forget what day it is and stuff. I sort of, I have, I'm a routine based organism, you know? Um, plus I had to try to move that ice. Basically it fell as sleet, but there was just so much sleet for like 20 hours that it formed a three inch layer of compacted sleet. And then it snowed for two, a couple of inches on top of that. So I went out and moved it. I had to use like a real shovel, like a dirt shovel, <laughs> steel steel shovel to break it and move it. What handle or fiberglass handle? Um, wood, <laughs> fiberglass handle, wood shaft? You think what? of that. Yeah. Wow. All right. Continue. Outrageous. <laughs> uh, it's good. The balance is great on this shovel. Uh, Are we talking yeah. shovels now? Yeah. Sure. Shovel cast. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, it's a great, anyway. Yeah. If it's um, not balanced, you lose it on the backswing. It, right. Exactly. It, it was a, it was a, a brutal uh, hour and a half <laughs> of physical labor. Um, but, okay. So today, interesting story today on Thursdays, uh, my daughter has a dance class. I pick her up from school and bring her over there. So I'm on my way between school and dance class. And there's a um, fresh, there's a nasty fresh pothole on our route. And it's definitely from the ice. And I definitely hit it real hard. And my car's tire pressure warning went off. And like, oh, in your oh, new car? Oh, oh my car. God. No, my, my car. So okay. my car is a 2013 Focus. And um, so anyway, so I pull, I'm like, I need to like hold tight. I got to speed change a tire to get you to dance class on time. So I get that thing out. I've actually never taken the spare out of that car. I've never needed to use it. Um, do you, would you guys imagine that a, what is that? Eight, nine year old spare tire has uh, any pressure at all in it? No. <laughs> Cause it, it did not, it did not <laughs> oh. have any pressure. So yeah, uh, I put it on and then I rolled around Wait, the second gas station. The first gas station didn't have, I don't have any cash on me. Their air machine didn't take cards. The second one did. Got it filled up. Got her to class about only about ten minutes late. Um, it was exciting, exciting times. Oh, and That's, now I I, yeah. I got home. I took a peek at the wheel. I can't see any damage. But like when I stopped the car in a parking lot to change the tire, I could hear the air finish hissing it, out it, of it. It may I have bent your rim on your car, and just the bead has lost yeah. the seal. Maybe. Yeah, I'm thinking that that might be what it is. Um, alloy rims. I can't see it. If it's dented, I can't see the damage that so might be inside. Yeah, so picture it to crash. He'll diagnose it for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I realize I, I worked in rental cars for a million years, so I know every yeah. every kind of thing that can possibly go wrong. I, I that, was so. honestly expecting the tire to be destroyed the way it hit, but mm. I think it, it is just something in the metalwork. Um, so anyway, I'll get it looked at. But yeah. That was uh, the excitement of this afternoon. 
pain in the ass that I have to deal with tomorrow. <laughs> I once got a flat tire in a Nissan Xterra that was their, their kind of off roady looking SUV. And it's yeah, like, God okay. damn it, it was pouring ass rain. And, you know, it's not my car, you know, it's a company car. So I've never changed a tire in it. Get the jack out and everything else. It was a scissor jack that wouldn't go high enough <laughs> to lift that, oh my God. that car off that lift the front end off the ground. So I had to Jeez. I had to actually I, I called somebody at the office to bring me the floor jack from work so that I could change the tire on the side of the road. It was oh, that insane. Sucks. Yeah, it was brutal. And then a lot of new cars, what they've started doing, this is this is I don't know what genius thought of this. They're not putting a spare in it anymore. They're mm, putting this, this little compressor in the vehicle that has fix-a-flat in it. It's a one-time oh. use deal, but it will only work if you've just got a small puncture, like yeah. a screw in the tire. Anything and, else, any yeah. actual damage to the tire, a bad yeah. bleed, like that like wouldn't have saved Data me. Said, w- wouldn't have done anything. It's just a joke. And that uh, it ruins the tire, doesn't it? And it does. It that, consumes it the tire. Can. The goo, though, also in you know, sub-zero temperatures and stuff and using a little, you know, $10 electric compressor, you're not going to be able to change a tire in our winters anyway with that thing. It's a joke. So just yeah. i share that. Yeah, we're talking shovels and, and spare tires now. Awesome. Well, geez, my new car so, does have a spare. So, I, I would be very upset if my car didn't have a spare. The, the tools that, I mean, it was a scissor jack, but it was a really nice, probably the easiest to use one I've ever had. Um. Was impre- good job, Ford, eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so we can move on to a more exciting topic, the weather, continuing on with that. So we yeah. we were prepared for that ice storm also in our neck of the woods, but it was mostly lives just... a, a, a few hundred miles east of me, don't so, you? Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. a few hundred miles up the Ohio River. Yeah. But at our latitude, it was mostly rain with a bit of snow and ice at the end. So yeah. no, which which was ominous getting ready for it because it was about a year to the day from the bad ice storm last year mm-hmm. where we lost power for many days here. Well, I'm glad it didn't hit you that bad. Weather. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> yeah, oh gosh, I made a fatal mistake of talking about bad weather. All right, so that's some gate going to gatekeep the weather yeah. now <laughs> yeah uh so what's who's left chig yeah um izzy's play they didn't make it to state they were one step away oh um they they were kind of low-key <laughs> happy that it yeah. was over you know they've been doing yeah. oh, okay. and stuff for like three months so there's a bit of relief that they didn't move on because it was going to be another week of practice and it was like a two-day event they were going to have to be at so mm. Yeah. That that was good. Uh, as far as in game, I'm just bug hunting. I'm trying to get that damn that damn dirty hydra. I I was telling these guys earlier. I <laughs> hydra's got eight hearts. I killed the seventh heart and then died. What? Um, that is awesome. And, and no, <laughs> no, it was really <laughs> depressing. I mean, th- I. My brain, for some reason, was telling me there were 10 hearts. So I got the seventh heart. I'm like, okay, three more to go. If I had known it was one more to go, I probably would have thrown up. I'm like, three more to go. (laughs) And then I screwed up, and the swarm just all of a sudden started bombing me, which typically when I'm ready for it, I I can just avoid. I just, you know, you you just fly a certain way, and you can avoid anything the swarm does. It's, you know, I, I flackless do this shit. But... I died, so I'm like, oh, God, that sucked. So then I'm like, okay, I'm so close to killing one. This is going to be fine. I think I've tried five or six times, maybe seven times since then. I can't get the third heart down now. I just, Aww. I'm just, I'm making stupid mistakes. I'm sure I'm just pushing too hard and, and trying to make it go faster, and there's no way to make it go faster. You just have to... Mm. You have to do it one step at a time, especially I don't use a laser to bring the shield down faster. I don't use, you know, uh, flak to kill the swarm. I'm literally, you know, I'm using my phantom and it's the four Goss cannons and I get my attack run phase. Then I get my heal up and synth phase, rinse and repeat until it's dead. And you're just attacking and then running. Yeah, I come in, uh, you know, get the 
get the sh- get the- get it to exert, kill the heart, and then run away. And then at that point, you know, synth uh, synth heat sinks if I need them, ammo if I need it, and then come back in. You know, uh, you know, take a quick peek at the clock before I go out. Even though literally on a hydra, it's it's the length of three uh, repair limpets is almost exactly how long it takes for the shield to drop. But I, when I'm going good, I, I kill a heart and I'm at like 97, 98% health. I'm not taking any damage if you're doing it right. But occasionally you, you screw up a you're little keeping bit. on your heat sinks. You take a couple. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Keeping on my heat sinks, but you take a couple volleys of fire and you know, you'll come out and if you're at 70, 72%, three repair limpets has you back up to full health and you're going back in at a hundred percent do it again and you know just hope you don't take too much damage and i just I, I it was going so smooth i think like three of the hearts i took zero damage zero and oh. it, it mm. just felt like i was a pro at this now i can't fucking i can't kill a heart it's killing me so i'm gonna take like three days off i think and just not do it just whatever bad habits i have hope i shake that and then come you know get back yeah. at it yeah just get her out of your head yeah, that that's that's been my and I'm I'm stubborn. I'm not using like the Mark II or the Chieftain. I'm 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 determined to do it in my Phantom. So I, you know, if I were to go to you know one of the more meta type ships, I think I could do it. And I'm not going to say easily. It's a it's a beast. The, the Hydra's mm-hmm. a beast. Um, well, the Mark II, you could put a laser back on. The cool. Exactly. Uh, to, to cool and to bring the shield down faster, you know, so I'm not getting bored. I think the length of the fight when you're waiting five minutes between each mm-hmm. heart for that shield to drop, it turns into a long fight. You know, you're you're, yeah. you're doing it for a while and keeping your concentration up is hard. That what what this is like, it reminds me when I was beating my head against the basilisk. It just I kept getting a little bit closer, a little bit closer, then it then just wasn't doing so good, a little bit closer, then finally got it, and now all the time and then the hydra was a little bit of a jump but it wasn't as big a jump cyclops to basilisk is a huge you mean medusa but yeah sorry then basilisk to medusa is is a a bit of a jump you know it's just more tanky but there's there's more sidestep too right because it's easier to hit the medusa it is definitely yeah definitely easier to hit and but i mean it just takes a lot more shooting but Mm -hmm. the hydra is you know two and a half times the hit points basically of the Medusa and the Medusa feels tanky. You get to the Hydra and I mean, it takes uh, 44 medium Gauss shots at optimum range to exert the first heart. 44. So, so I'm and running that's, that's two, in rapid two. succession because the, the exertion, because that's it where is she healing. heals. Yes, yeah. exactly. So you need that, you know, I've got two Gauss cannons on each uh, trigger. So it's alternating triggers you know, bam, 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 and doing the heat sink right when you hear the sound, you know, when you start hearing, I don't know, I call it when it flushes the heat sink. As soon as the heat sink mm-hmm. sound starts that it's flushing, I launch the next one, then it says heat sink deployed, and, and you stay cold the whole time, and I spike at about 16 heat, and just not taking any damage, or just staying in that rhythm, but that's, you know, almost 50 trigger pulls to get that first heart to exert, huh. you know, and then, and, and then, then you it's, you know, it. then it's 13 uh, Goss hits to actually kill the heart. And you've got what forty seconds, forty five seconds to do Damn. that. Forty five. So, yeah. yeah, it's 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 it is no joke. It's a lot of fun, and I'm. So, so I have, feel, how do you ahead. avoid the swarm while you're orbiting or the the swarm? Cyclops? The swarm's aim is horrible. As long as you're moving, you know, as their long projectiles as you're are very slow. Yes, they're passing kind of in front of your canopy, and as long as you're, you know, down thrusting a little bit when it's near, and you know, sometimes I, I have to, you know, laterally move to get the swarm back in a better position so it's missing me. As long as it's not right on top of you, mm. they can't hit shit. It, even, it's really even weird. when they dive, even when they like go in their formation and try to dive bomb you. My trick for that is I actually kind of go at them with down thrust and boost. And then the rockets mm, all yeah. kind of blow up above my ship as I go mm. by. It's scary. You hear them blowing up. You <laughs> see them blowing up and you're hearing the noise. You know, it's just boom, boom, boom. But then once they all go off, yeah, you're free and clear. And like when a whole swarm does it, your radar just lights up with the white triangles. It's just, you know, the whole mm. radar turns white basically. And you just 
hope and pray you're, you're boosting all the way past them and then you come out and you're fine. And then a new swarm comes out and hopefully you got the heart dead before then or boost away at that point and come back. Because the other thing is like if you don't kill the heart during an exertion, check heat sinks and ammo because it might be good just to run away for a minute, resynth yeah. and come back because the heart doesn't heal when it's But you still have to re-exert it. Yeah, you have to re-exert it. it, yes. But where I make a mistake sometimes is I just try to re-exert right away and it's like I'm running low on heat sinks and it's like, what the hell am I doing? So it, it's patience. Just mm. patience yeah. and repetition. Yep. It, so when, when you when you take damage, do you find it, is it from the main cannon on the Hydra hitting you more so than the swarm getting you? Uh, for the most, when, when I'm taking the most damage is when I forget to heat, do a heat sink or because I'm such a, Pips guy from CQC all the time. When the Hydra turns to reload, it moves away from you. I boost towards it and I move my pips to engines at that point. <laughs> and then sometimes I don't get the pips back into into weapons. Mm. So I'll, I start spiking. I, yeah, I start mm. spiking up into 24, 26, and then they then he can hit me and I start taking damage. I'm like, oh damn it. And then I'm already behind the curve, get my weapons back and my pips back in weapons and then i gotta not shoot for you know a little bit and it's it, yeah it's it's just mistakes it's just tiny mistakes and i know what those mistakes are the swarm itself yeah sometimes you know you get so tunnel vision because those hearts it's such a tiny target it really is and you, you're moving your target's moving and you're trying to hit that small target I'll get tunnel vision sometime where then I just kind of move right into the swarm and then it's, then it starts hitting me and I might fly through the circle of death. Then it turns into missiles and then I'm constantly, you know, trying to fight that off. And once again, it's just making a mistake. It's just, yeah, it, there's just no room for errors and, you know, a 50 minute fight. Yeah. So mm. it is what it is. I, I, I'll, I'll get it. Hopefully, hopefully by before next week's show, I'll, be you know finally able to brag that i've killed the the, <laughs> the the hydra now my goal is to kill the hydra solo and then once i know i can kill the hydra then i want to be able to do an a full cz through the hydra uh, solo right now i can do a cz <laughs> through up to the hydra i can go do a full cz kill you know the the, the four uh uh interceptors and all the scouts to begin with you know you just uh, interceptors are kind of easy because you just pull them out one at a time from the cz right, and, cut them and, out. and kill them yeah it's 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 not a big deal the scouts are just annoying it just means you're wasting limpets to repair after you you know you kill off that first wave of scouts and then it's grabbing one uh you know stupid interceptor after another and you know medusa's you know i I posted a screenshot the other day. I finished a Medusa fight at 100% hull. I dropped down to, you know, 95, 94 a few times, but then a limpet here repaired that limpet that, you know, I, Medusas right. have gotten pretty, pretty easy. So I can do all that. I just need to be able to kill that Hydra. Then I can try to make that, a, you know, that's my end goal on bug hunting, you know, is, is to do an AXCZ solo from beginning to end. And then it's like, all right, now I'm, I'm an accomplished bug hunter at that point. Right. That, that's when you'll quit elite. There won't be any <laughs> grinds left. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, I really. <laughs> what, what else is there to do? BGS. Yeah. I know. Sorry, Nurgle. Squadron time, right? Yeah. I always, um, <laughs> I still haven't done a, a Medusa solo yet, but it's, I don't think I have, will have trouble with it, honestly. I've done so many basilisks just like, for kicks, you know, at, yeah. at work. You take, take a lunch break from work, go to a lunchtime basilisk. It's over and over and over again. And then I'm really, what I'm aiming for is like, I'm going to go back and face the Medusa and it'll be like, oh girl, you're just standing still taking the, taking the yeah. damage here. Um, but I still haven't done it yet. I kind of always figured that that's where I would stop. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't need to beat my head against the Hydra solo, but I don't know, maybe I'll feel differently someday. Yeah, see the best the personality difference between us, I think. My fastest time in a basilisk, I killed one in, I think, 13 minutes. I was pulling out a stopwatch because I was trying to see how fast I could kill Cyclops and how fast I could kill a, yeah. a basilisk. And I, I have to have the laser on there to get that shield down faster 
to kill sure, right. them fast. So it's three yeah. Goss and one laser. And I did a Cyclops in three minutes, five seconds. <laughs> and I did, <laughs> did a Basilisk in a little over 13. So I haven't tried to speed run a Medusa yet because they're so tanky. It's nice to have the four Goss. I just have a hard yeah. time. I, I have a hard time going back to, you know, just the three Goss on a, on a bigger a slower pace. beast. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll just take the 40 million and, and take, you know, half an hour to kill a Medusa. You know, that, that's fine. It's, it's still good money. 80 million an hour. Is, uh, I'll take it. So. But that's all my bug stories for this week. You're going to have like mm-hmm. two legendary achievements in the game in the span of a month. I CQC hope so. Lee and then a Hydra. That's great. Hydra Soul. Yeah, I've, I've been over on the AXI Discord uh, quite a bit because you can just get tips and stuff. And, you know, you hear, you, you get to see, you know, other people attempting stuff and them saying what their mistakes are. And then the guys who really know what the hell they're doing, giving them advice. You need to learn little tips and tricks here and there as to what's going on and then that then you also are right there to see you know some of those freaking aces you know i'm gonna try three hydras now and then you know they're streaming and you go check it out it's like oh my god the dude killed three hydras that's fucking ridiculous so uh, it, it is it's so it's when you when crazy. they do that though do they like do they drive out and like fill up all their mats and then okay it's time to do three hydras now oh now my mats are empty like what what more or less thing yeah, yeah, more or less. Yeah, you're that you're sucks. totally. I mean, I I, and I'll be honest. I'm using premium ammo on the Hydra right now. I was doing it with regular ammo, and I got two hearts. Was the best attempt I ever had. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. And then you're synthing like synthing ammo after the first heart, and then you know you're going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just just not worth it. With premium ammo, I can get three hearts down before I have to synth ammo. So. You know, it's going to take yeah. two synths and everything else, but it takes, you know, 10 focus crystals to do premium ammo. So Oof. you can only, re- if you've got four Goss cannons, you can only refill those three, four times, you know. With a full stash, yeah. With a wow. full stack. So, you know, you basically, if you're going to, like, going to seven, I had to go out to the guard, uh, you know, I had to, well, I had to go hit a material trader, then I just went some high end, you know, I just went and did some engineer grinding or Matt's grinding just because I use so much that I went back out to the guardian site to fill up, uh, what is it? The components, whatever that one is, Thargoid, whatever components. That's the one that is like the rarest of them. Techno guardian tech components. Technology that's the components. one that, yeah. that's the one that's used in, uh, premium synth. And that's, it's six it's used of those. In the tech broker unlocks too. So uh, yeah, but I got all that unlocked. So pfft. But uh, <laughs> I, I go out there and, you know, and that's like the rarest one of them. So if you get at a Guardian site, if you're lucky, there will be three uh, panels that have the tech components in it. And it's always in the same spot. So it's, you know, hit those three, ride out of the Guardian site, log out, log back in, go hit those three panels, <laughs> go out, log out, log back in. I mean, it's compelling gameplay for sure. Yeah. But, you know, it's mm. it's two carrier jumps out there. And two carrier mm-hmm. jumps back. So, you know, there's the tritium expense, the time to jump out there because it's a 15 minute <laughs> cooldown each jump, or it's 15 minutes between jumps and a minute and a half cooldown. And so it, there's no fast way to do it. So, yeah, gar- uh, Thargoid hunting is, it just adds to the grind so much. And I wish to God, like, you should be able to trade Thargoid hearts for engineering mats, whether it's Guardian yeah. mats or any high-grade mat. You should be able to trade those for that. That way, by hunting, by doing what you enjoy, you can go get more of what you need to mm-hmm. do what you enjoy. I know that it sounds thing, crazy. Well, that, that, was, that was crazy part talk. of the things that were, that were sort of talked about, this, this engineering revamp that, that um, is still possibly in the in our future right that we were surveyed yeah. about that was that was on the list that yep. exactly well that i brought stuff. up that on this show like a year and a half ago yeah you know and yeah. so it, it, and that's where they got the idea i mean obviously uh, obviously they're listening they, they always yeah. listen they always listen uh do you guys um do you guys remember like a half an hour ago when chig said we didn't have anything to talk about on this show i do yes uh do I, you want to do a squad I, update I, Sure. All right, let's do it. 
Incoming priority message. Squadron briefing. So we're uh, we're still trying to consolidate in Balmus. We're trying to move a faction up to us so we can go to war and take a station from them. We are trying to do the same thing in Snoky Zion so we can start consolidating the factions there. And oops, sorry, I'm being attacked by a federal Corvette. And um, and yeah. we're in expansion again. This time it's from 7 Andromeda, but that is going to give us another shot at Lambda Andromeda, and we've already got our target faction retreating there, so it's really just a matter of time uh, and hoping that nothing comes along to mess that up in the meantime. And I know we were kind of talking before we recorded tonight, because me and Trax at least like to do uh, mega ship scenarios in, in systems to try to generate rep and bounties and that kind of stuff. And That's I'm, good. Yeah, I mean, it, it's good fun. It's kind of rapid turnaround. It's, you know, you can go to it. It's, it's like a standing CZ that you can access anytime you want. Um, but bring I play a kill warrant scanner. It's good. You make money. Yes, definitely bring a kill warrant scanner. But I play almost exclusively in Horizons, and, you know, Trax is now playing in Odyssey, and we have discovered by comparing notes that those function differently, really, depending upon which game, game mode you're in. Because we're both yeah. using for for this week, we've both been using the same one, just the same mega ship. <laughs> yeah, just in Odyssey versus Horizons, and I'll go and scan the the mega ship, and sometimes I'll get an event to start right away. Sometimes I have to wait a couple of minutes. Um, the lag time between those scenarios happening, it's usually more efficient to uh, low wake out of the instance, low wake back in, and restart it. Because sometimes you'll you'll sit there for ten, fifteen minutes waiting on one to start. Normally, mm -hmm. sometimes they'll just pop right up, but it's usually a long wait. And Trax was doing them in Odyssey, and they're just back to back to back to back with almost no rest between them. Yeah, I would and bring collector limpets and scoop up all the uh, mats that are laying around after you lay waste to the pirates, and you don't have time for it in Odyssey. The next scenario starts before my collector limpets even bring one or two things in. So that's a, you know, that's an interesting and non-negligible uh, difference between the two game modes. Yeah, for sure. And and also, there's in those scenarios in Horizons, this bug always happened where um, your target um, hostiles and target highest threat buttons have no function in that scenario. Like there are no threats, even right. though there are red on the radar, they just don't show up as as uh, hostiles. It, as far as you're targeting. Um, Keybinds are concerned. In Odyssey, all that is fixed. It all works correctly. So it's like this is an instance where Odyssey fixed these long-standing and still extant bugs uh, in Horizon. That's what they've been working on this whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the legs are just icing on the cake, I guess. It yeah. was really just fixing these scenarios. Yeah, and if any of you out there have never done any of these scenarios, and they, they don't just happen at megaships, although that's the easiest place to get them. But if you've never done any of them, they're pretty interesting. Some of them can be really fun. And, and if you want some information on how to kind of find them and get them started, stick your head in Discord. I'll be happy to share what I know about them. I know far from everything. But um, some of them can be really interesting, and it's a fun way to, to spend some time. And they're basically just like little scenario instances that are hovering out there waiting for you to play with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know I barely, barely participated in them myself. I've always just been a conflict zone user. Yeah, so it's, it's a different thing because in these scenarios you get bounties, not combat bonds. So, right. But what, what seems to trigger them, I guess, Nurgle, you'll correct me or whatever, but if there's a war in the system, then the megaships and sometimes the installations in the system will tend to spawn these scenarios, but it's typically right. one of the warring factions attacking a um, attacking a mega ship that is owned by whatever the controlling faction is. So if if it's right. not the controlling faction that's at war, like what's currently going on, like we own that system, but two of the other factions are at war. So we go in there, we're defending a loose screws mega ship from pirates from one of the warring factions. Right. And so we gain influence for loose screws and bounties for loose screws and a bunch of bounties for the other factions because I've got a kill warrant scanner, but I turn those in in a different system because I'm trying to boost loose screws above all else. So, so I give those bounties elsewhere. Two important things he said there that bear repeating. 
One. Oh, I thought you were going to say that are wrong. <laughs> no, no. Bear repeating. One is not only do you get bounties, you get a direct influence bump from doing yes. this. So it's it's a double hit. Now it's probably not a very big influence bump, but the fact that you're getting influence for whoever owns the asset and um, and the bounties. Yeah, I mean you're double it dipping. Says, when I complete one of those, it says moderate influence increase, which is what it says. Um, I think in a medium intensity conflict zone. So it's yeah. not nothing. No, it's it's not nothing. And then the other important thing to remember is your every horizons asset, because this only happens at horizons assets. So every horizon asset in the system is owned by somebody. The mega ships just happen to be owned by whoever owns the system. But because they're some transient. Other, yeah. So some other faction may own, you know, some floating orbital farm or whatever they are out there. So the scenarios that are going to spawn are defend the base scenarios. So if you choose to defend the installation, you're gaining bounties for whoever owns it. Or you can choose, because it's just like the beginning of a CZ, it asks you to pick, pick a side. If you choose to join the attacking side, you'll gain bounties with whatever faction that is. So you can, it's a, it's a very direct way to gain bounties for uh, mm -hmm. actions within the system. I would think you'd also gain influence then on the, I've never done the attacking side, but you would yeah, be destroying the power regulators on the station. Yeah. And I guess, I guess all of the system security, you would, they're not wanted. So you'll probably get notoriety for that. Uh, uh, if you kill the I ships. Do not know. That's um, a good I've question. never done it, but I Neither bet you would get I. notoriety and you'd probably get an influence bump if you successfully kill all the power right. regulators. Yeah, I would assume the reward is the same. Mm -hmm. so, but they're, like I said, it, you can almost always find them appearing when there's a war in the system at megaships if those exist. And of course, megaships will always be whoever controls the system. But if the factions at war hold assets, they'll typically spawn at those assets. Um, and then sometimes you can get them in others when there's a uh, boom or pirate attack or some of that, but it's, it's spotty. You really, you have to go to one and try it and kind of hang out for a minute to see if it's going to spawn one. And they don't always, and you can always move on and try another. Yeah. Sometimes it was, I remember it being very tough to tell if you were, it's like, should I give up? Should I give up? Should, yeah. Even the other night. So I did a stream on Tuesday. Um, and we did some of these, uh, Crash was playing with me, and we started in Horizons because that performs like a lot better for him on his yeah. system. So we started, and we hung around that station for ages, or the mega ship. And I was like, this is the one that was popping off for me all the time in Odyssey. And I was like, this has totally been working. Maybe it's different in Horizons. Maybe we should try the, there's another mega ship on the other side of the planet. We could go there. We hung around for like 10 or 12 minutes. We're about to jump out. We're like charging our drives and then it's then the scenario started but then yeah. when it was complete it it waited we waited seven or eight minutes and i was like this is dumb like let's pop into odyssey where we can actually make some influence because it'll restart right interesting how they behave differently but it's good to know that yeah um and i mean even i see a, a significant performance difference it just in space there and, and stuff like that. Like that's not out of settlement. And so I, I get it. Like I, there's enough of a performance difference. Like I have my VR uh, uh, super sampling higher in Horizons. I have to turn it down in Odyssey just to get it playable. And then it's still like, I can feel the difference. It's okay, but I can feel the difference. And it's, so I go to Horizons and it's smoother and clearer. Go I figure. Have, I would have stayed in there all night <laughs> if, yeah. the, if the scenarios were spawning. But anyway, anyway, be oh, one more thing that bears saying and then probably repeating is uh, don't, yeah. don't shoot the station and yeah. don't shoot friendlies. Um, this happened to us several times by accident. I think some of it was because of bugs, honestly, like stupid NPCs crashing into me and then giving me a bounty for it. Dumb stuff like that. But um, if you get fines and bounties for the controlling faction that you're trying to work for, everybody goes hostile, but it's not like a CZ where you can just leave and come back. you got to go clear that bounty. you got to clear it on Interstellar Factor, and the bounty you just got it the, for the faction is the controlling faction, which happens to be Loose Screws in this case, and I'm in the heart of Loose Screws space, and we had to search far and wide to find an Interstellar Factor in a system that we weren't in so that I could pay off the stupid bounty. And it happened 
like no less than five times on that night. It was extremely yeah. you irritating. You can't use interstellar factors to pay off bounties of the controlling faction. Right? Because if the faction's present at the station, then you will just show up in the bounties list, like hand yourself in. Right. The interstellar factor contact. is only going to work for, for factions that are not at that system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're everywhere. Yeah, unfortunately, in this case. <laughs> yeah. Suffering so, some, from success. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, cool. All right. Hey, man, we're talking a lot on a night that there was nothing to talk I about. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm never going to hear the end of that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's your show title. Nothing to talk about. <laughs> nothing to talk about. That's a good one. Okay. Um, uh, next up, let's let's get to some in-game news, and I'm going to start with a segment submitted by Jay Barron, Blame the Bard, for the 10th of February, 2022. Welcome aboard the Tenhadium Express. We regret to inform passengers that everyone's favorite flight attendant was actually a hand puppet tied to a helium-filled balloon who met an untimely demise with an airlock after an attempted mutiny. Rest in peace, Mr. Smithers. Let's jump right on into this week's recap. On February 3rd, ACT needed help cracking an enema leg. A request was sent out by ACT for help from pilots to decrypt the Omega Grid to locate the Emperor. Uh, On February 4th, Hudson refuses to go towards the light. Uh, The president proposes a removal of term limits, wishing to be president indefinitely. On February 6th, there was no headline news. However, there were rumors of Thargoids being spotted across, uh, spotted across the galaxy in various sectors. On, very, on uh, very February 7th, the Bauman Report saw its shadow. We have six more weeks without Aegis. The shutdown of Aegis is to continue as planned, regardless of new information about the Alexandria. On February 8th, Lee Young Rui expresses Seller's remorse. Edward Mahone reassures Lee that the Riord attack was just a one off incident that won't happen again. On February 9th, the Emperor on ice performance is a smashing success. The Emperor held captive in cryogenic pod is saved by act. Senators implicated and arrested. Move on to the CG prediction Phase 4 of the Colonia Bridge. That's all for this week. Have fun out there. All right. Thanks, Baron. Um, I was, I actually almost spit beer on my keyboard. It's pretty good. <laughs> I think good he's, uh, he's, yeah. he's been, I can tell he's been feeling pretty good about it um, with the messages he sends when he sends me these recordings. Uh, yeah, I think you're hitting your stride there, bud. That's fun. Definitely. Uh, so, uh, and I wanted to especially mention again the Omega Grid stuff. Um, it's all basically been deciphered, but that's a cool bit of story. I don't, did you guys follow any of this? Have you chased any of those down or probably no, not? no, no. Yeah. no, I see the stories and read them. It's been yeah, there. I think it's, I mean, it's, it's the, the puzzles themselves didn't seem to be so tough that it was like something that everybody has to run out and do. I, I'm personally having a lot of fun just watching other people solve it and, yeah. and hearing about it in the news and, and following, um, what's going on in the report. Um, in the show notes, I'm putting a link to the Canon Science article about the Omega Grid, which goes over the whole thing, including the messages as they're decoded. So you can kind of follow the whole story. I don't see any reason to do like spoilers here on the podcast, but um, check it out. It's um, it's a cool read. And if you want a voice acted version, I guess, then, then um, we're going to reference... The Galnet News Digest YouTube channel because they're they're right there with it. Um, subscribe subscribing to that channel uh, makes sure I never miss a Galnet article, and uh, they're fun too. So, and they're yeah. short and to the point, like a minute, two minutes. Yeah, Quick. yeah. It's it's the it's it's uh, interesting to me how just how much content those two produce um, because they have. They have the whole like weekly recap that goes out after Lave. There's another one after um, the uh, other. Uh, is it Hutton or Guard Frequency? Shoot, I guess it's probably Guard Frequency. But it, it, I, apparently, those are totally different productions. Mm. And then they put out these YouTube things, which sometimes those segments I think are, are reused, but not all of them are not. They're not quite the same. And boy, they just 
Anyway, they've really like the, up the, the, the little like editorial like insights they add into the stories, just like little little statements right. that aren't, aren't in the text. Like, yeah, exactly. Like an actual news service. I like this. Well, right, and and it, it does help because I don't always know the context uh, exactly, or or I don't remember it. Right. So anyway, cool, cool stuff. So uh, dev news then. Still no streams this week. However, we did get a message on the forums from Art, basically announcing that something will be announced soon about something soon. Uh, is the the meme version of this, but yeah, uh, I I personally appreciate hearing that they're not all dead, um, and that that more things are planned. He specifically mentioned starting streams back up again soon, um, and the new year coming with um, a full year campaign including Twitch drops, which is the thing people have been asking about for ages. There's still um, story going on with the Azimuth Saga stuff. Um, obviously the, 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 since we're in, 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 we were in game news just now the the Thargoids have reemerged as of today. Uh, and also there's a new CG, the, another, um, Colonia Bridge Project CG, um, has also yeah. started today, which we didn't mention yet. So I guess I'll throw that in there. But so the, the part of this message that interests me is the, in the third paragraph, however, there are several questions that must be answered internally to inform the communication plan. It's important to me that we address these key prior, these subjects by priority. And when we do that, the information we provide is clear. The team and I are working incredibly hard behind the scenes to gather this information and provide these answers. So to me, that sounds like, you know, waiting on, decisions from the top and yeah that interests me because um you know streams starting up again would would be fun but i actually do want something different and there's a few you know there are things that basically every time they go online they get pestered with the same questions and to me that says something is going to change about at least some of that and it, you know, even if it's not the answer we want, it's it's some some more information. So, what what do you guys think? I, I would like to agree with you on that. It, let me rephrase that. I do agree with you on that. I feel like there is at least some moderately large announcement in the future. However, mm. I have to say there is a pattern with FDEV's communication, which is we're going to say something, we're going to completely obfuscate what we're trying to say because we want to be coy about it. And then all of us, podcasters and players alike, read something into that that's not there. And Hmm. this, this has been a common complaint we have with how they communicate. They can't just come out and say anything. They have to, you know, couch it in this crazy cryptic language that leaves it open to any conceivable interpretation. And then we end up with wah wah, you know. I, I will not be surprised if in a month their big announcement is COVID restrictions have been lifted and we're all back in the office. I will also isn't, not be isn't surprised. That, uh, isn't that our, well? This that's already here. Well, yeah, but but the point is, I will also not be surprised if in a month they come out and say we're dropping console support and moving forward with Odyssey only on PC. Right. Right. Exactly. Uh, exactly. There's. Because the range of what's possible with that announcement goes from absolutely nothing to oh my god, yeah, yeah. It, it could it could be very good. It could be very bad. Um, and I'm pre- honestly prepared for either. I don't think that that's outside of the realm of possibility. That that it would be, but but something like things that have happened since, um, since community communication ended at the end of last year are like their financial reports and like more, you know, it's basically all been bad. Yeah. There are other games that they're, as a, as a publisher that they're involved with, um, there, there have been other launch failures for various reasons, but you know, it's not, it's not like Odyssey was a failure and then everything else has been great. So let's, jump back in here and get things fixed. It's, you know, they, they, it could be that something in, is going on in the background there that's like, well, we need to reconfigure what our 
hopes and dreams are for this game. Yeah. Yeah, you see know. the sentence that you were excited about. However, there are several questions that must be answered internally to inform this communication plan. Uh, the sentence confuses me. They're going to inform this. Shouldn't it be to form this communication plan well, or finalize yeah. this Should communication? Inform more? is just a weird word. But what, what I'm okay. saying is, is I, I totally understand what you're saying. I mean, that same paragraph earlier in that i think or no the paragraph before i was a little more interested in when they say you know they're going to share you know upcoming content for this year including new updates content expansions and the next major phase and the ongoing narrative yeah the narrative stuff i'll leave that to bard and, and the people that really pay attention to that i'm more curious and you know the content expansions what that that includes in how much information we're going to get now him talking about it you know they got to, you know, I, I agree. I read into it. They got to get permission from the higher ups. But to me, that's still not an announcement of any kind because they that's always standard. have to, yeah, yeah, they always have to get permission from the higher ups to say anything, especially with what the stock price of the company has been doing and everything else. They, they, they need to get some excitement out here and they go two months without saying a word to us and they announce that, hey, we're going to be saying something at some point once we get permission to say something. And I, 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 it kind of, this actually kind of rubbed me a little bit like, oh my God, this is just to yeah. throw, throw, throw them a damn cracker so they don't starve to death. You know, yeah. I, I don't know. It, it, there just wasn't a it, lot there. Well, it's we it's announcing a non-announcement. I, yeah. yeah. There was nothing nothing wrong with with this i think it would have been more appropriate to put it out at the beginning of january yes. yeah a lot sooner than now i don't know why you have to wait so long to say something like this the cracker wouldn't have tasted so good then though it would have been a stale <laughs> <laughs> oh. it would yeah i mean it would be less stale but on the same time we wouldn't have been as hungry maybe it was so saltier it's a trade off saltier the salt yeah. hadn't fallen off quite as much. The yeah, the but it would have been rats, so. Wait, you're saying it would have been a good not a salty message, a good appetizer <laughs> cracker. It would have been. I mean, it would have, it would have primed our appetite for more. I was talking about actual salt, like the tasting good salt, not not our tears. I've I've forgotten <laughs> about that. I've yeah. forgotten what that is. Yeah, yeah. I've I've just tried to not get too excited about anything until it's in the game anymore. Ever. I'm well, still sour on the yeah. whole Odyssey Alpha statement yeah. that this is an old branch of the game. Ever since then, I mm -hmm. I don't put too I have much a hard time stock. believing anything. Yeah, exactly. Not that there's like not that there's like much to believe or not believe in this in this statement. It's just like yeah, okay, you're there's there's they're telling us that they're still alive, right. basically right. with this, which is good. I just wish it would have come uh, sooner. Yeah, here I'll give I, the TLDR of of his statement. Hi, I'm Arf. Uh, we are here to hype the game. We'll do that at some point this year once we get permission. Stay tuned. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I can't say that you're wrong. I don't have any, I don't, you know, like I can't argue that that's wrong. That fits My the wife facts. would love if you could. <laughs> <laughs> that, what you said fits the facts. Uh, but I'm pointing out just a detail that the reason that I hung on to that sentence is because he doesn't usually talk that way. He just says, we don't have any information at that time. That's what they say when they haven't been given, like when nothing is going to be said. That's what they say. This is, mm -hmm. a, this is a departure from, we don't have yes. any information. This is, it's what this reads to me as, because it's a departure, this reads to me as, we actually have something. And soon we're going to be able to say it like and yeah. it's it's not yeah. a date it's not telling us what the subject matter is i don't know if this is consoles i don't know if this is um all the money's been pulled out from under us i don't know if this is uh we're doubling down and they're reinvesting because they realized that that a bunch of things are going wrong and the only way to save it is to actually improve it and that will bring the financials back. Who knows? Maybe the board just went, oh, shoot, we made a bunch of bad mistakes and we need to actually spend this year recovering from that in a way that, that makes the game better and then the financials will follow. I mean, I'm not holding my breath for that, but it's so, so something it, a human could say. So a, and, a, fair, a fair thing to say would be, while well, this, what he's saying is probably a standard process getting approvals to do new things but because he's saying it in this case maybe there's something yeah. there is something bigger 
coming because it usually it's doesn't. A, it's go a step yeah. out of the standard for him yeah. to voice that exactly those yeah. words. And I, I do agree with you. the way he worded it. It sounds more like there is something to say. We just can't say it yet. Yeah, or Which we haven't figured out how to say it or whatever. Information the the non right. the you know right when it was development possible stuff they'd release. We'll be releasing a roadmap, is what they had said before. Now this time, when it's involving what the CM team can say, it's a community plan is coming. I yeah, I don't know. I, I just I I I, I, I I, I'm yeah. not salty. I'm just, it is what it is. I just felt like this yeah. was a lot of non-news. Uh-huh. I mean, it was like, yeah. Arf yeah. finally said something. He's alive. That's that's the news I got. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's the biggest well, part. Well, him being alive is good. Now, you could be totally right, and the communication plan that could be being finalized by the higher-ups is we are going to stream from the office on Tuesdays. You will still say nothing to them. Because that's communication. You know, you could be totally right, and, yeah. and this could be nothing. Yeah, yeah you guys it's don't have to do it through language. Zoom anymore. You can be in the same room <laughs> saying nothing rather than being yeah. at separate locations saying nothing. On on the on the topic of streams, like I, if we want to change to that for a moment, I did are you not asking miss. permission? <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask forgiveness. <laughs> I granted. I did not miss. The the usual like super cruise news this month. It took me a couple of weeks before I realized. Hey, wait! I haven't gotten the Twitch alerts that they're streaming because I'm just not into mm-hmm. the regular streams where they're not really talking about anything news or development oriented. Like I'm just not into looking at the screenshots or watching them do a let's play of the game. So if if they ch- are changing formats, and maybe I don't know, maybe they would stream less often. Or have a focused news stream. I don't know. I just feel like having streams all the time kind of diluted their importance. I think I'm most disappointed at this long silence because it seemed like they had made a lot of progress. You know, they had an actual, you know, a couple different developers on those streams a couple times. It was Mm -hmm. pre recorded messages and stuff, but talking about actual things in games. And the thought process that they went through to get there and, you know, you could try to, you know, we're reading into just this four paragraph statement by ARF that doesn't say much of anything. When you get a developer in there and they're talking about stuff, then you can really dig in and your your imagination can go wild. And, you know, they were making that progress. And I'm like, oh, my God, if we start getting a developer on every couple weeks, we might start getting some actual insight as to the development of this game and what the actual problems they're having are and, you know, how they're overcoming them. Instead, they did that and then went quiet for two months and then we yeah. get this from our, I, that, that's where my disappointment comes from. They were, yeah. they were still getting their, getting their feet under them with those developer streams. See, I really wish those had Mm-hmm. Kept going. The yeah, like the yeah. the designer talking about lay, work making the cockpit for the new SRV work. Yeah, was fantastic. Stuff um, the UI guy when he the was UI on. guy was was good. There was some stuff that I yeah I, I, I agree. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I not, just have issues man. with it with the UI in a couple of places. Mostly, mostly yeah. it's an improvement. There's a few <sighs> spots where it's like what the fuck. But anyway, uh, <laughs> it please everybody, man. Clearly. I I say that with I hope you can hear my smile because while I mean every word I say, like it doesn't mean I don't want to hear about it and whatever. Um yeah. All right. Well, you guys are starting to sour me a little bit on I, I get Not, it. Just I temp- get it. Temper expectations. And, yeah, yeah. Tem- exactly. Well, I mean, like I said, my yeah. within my my expectation would be they come on and go, all right, consoles, you're done. It's over. We won't drag you along anymore. Uh, Odyssey, yeah. we got two more updates in them, and then we're going to maintenance mode this thing. See you later. But That's also, within my expectations. But, but also within my expectations are we're going to start doing live streams on Tuesday from the office. Well, I think he basically said that. Well, but, I, but I'm saying it, the, the entire range of possibilities exist within what they said. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he they they he commits to streams weekly, Twitch drops year round Twitch drops. Yeah, so I mean, they're basically committing to this is a, the game's at least around for another year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can infer that much at least. 
but I, not I much more. Hope, I just hope that this is like, I don't know, back when I was a kid at Christmas and I'd open up one present and it was freaking socks. And it's like, oh, and then <laughs> they, they pull a present out from and behind you the couch. you older and you love socks now. No, well, well, now I love it, yes. But what I'm saying <laughs> is I'd, I'd be disappointed in that and then they'd reach behind the couch and pull out a present that wasn't under the tree and it's, you know, mm. a Millennium Falcon and I'm jumping for joy. Hopefully they got something big that they're going to be announcing. You know, maybe, maybe yeah. they're, in, who the fuck knows? They could be announcing the next expansion before they even get this one out on console how would that be for a kick in the pants so so here's the here's the takeaway from this segment of the loose cruise podcast chig very much (laughs) wants tracks to be right but boy he's not holding his breath exactly i'd be dead (laughs) okay anything more on this Uh, crickets okay put a fork in it Yeah. All right. Um, I've got one more thing I want to talk about, and that is this performance crap that I, this testing and stuff. I I asked everybody a couple of weeks ago to please help me test this particular thing. This particular thing being when the game's frame rate drops below my screen refresh rate, my GPU utilization also drops, sort of the opposite of what happens with, um, let's not beat around the bush what happens with properly running software. (laughs) So, um, and just to be absolutely clear, because apparently this isn't clear to some people, yes, your GPU should be 100% utilized unless it's producing frames faster than your monitor can show and your computer stops it because of VSync. If your frame rate is uncapped and it can go as fast as it can, it will always be at 100% or, you know, close to that. It fluctuates 95, 100 that's the way games work. That's the way GPUs work. Uh, unless something's bottlenecking it. Like if your CPU isn't fast enough, I mean, there's 100 million con- hardware configurations. But assuming everything's fast enough, a game will run that fast. Um, I was asking for some weird things about settlements and the AI, because I feel like it has something to do with the AI in the game. But I, I wasn't able to myself repeat the thing that I was asking everybody to test. So that's silly. I can't even repeat it. Nobody's going to be able to do this. So the killing everybody at a settlement and then observing the difference um, doesn't seem to really work. I couldn't get it to repeat. So I just want to simplify even more. Um, I have created a Google form where you can fill in your commander name, your what your GPU is, what your CPU is, and share with me a screenshot or a video of something. Now, what I want this something to be is go to somewhere in Odyssey where your frame rate drops. Typically, this is at a surface settlement or conflict zone, which is also at a surface settlement. But those are typically where people have the the worst uh, frame rates. Go there or just, frankly, anywhere in the game where your frame rate is less than your V-Sync. Typically, when you're testing games, you want to unlock your frame rate. But I'm really just trying to put it in a situation where it's struggling. So you don't even have to unlock your frame rate if you don't want to. Uh, And then pull up your task manager. All the info is there about how to do it. I've given you example screenshots. And I just want to know, I think that basically the the, the weaker your hardware is, the less you're going to see this phenomena that I'm seeing. Um, but I have a really good example of it. There's a video there where I'm just in, in a ship above a settlement. And whenever I fly toward the settlement, my frame rate tanks into like below 30. And my utilization drops way, way down. The opposite of what should be happening. And then when I held still, it comes back. And I just show this a number of times. I move around the settlement a bit. You can see it clearly in the video. And I share a couple of other screenshots. I observed weird things in my testing where... I went to prison for fun and giggles. And when I walked out into the concourse in the prison, my frame rate, which I unlocked for the sake of this test, was way high. It was extremely high. And I looked and my GPU was being 100% utilized. And it was just running as fast as it could, producing as frames as fast as it could. And I thought, well, this is interesting. I took a little screenshot. And then I went and booked my Apex shuttle back to the planet where I got rested or wherever my ship was. And as soon as I booked the shuttle, my frame rate went back down below my monitor refresh rate and my GPU usage went down. 
So we're back to the mm. old tricks again. Then I go in the ele- and I, I didn't share all these screenshots. They're in our Discord. But I went into the elevator to go to the Apex taxi. And when I got into the elevator, the frame rate shot back up and the utilization shot back up. So what's going on with that? That's that's not correct. That's not the way software yeah. is supposed to work. That's it, weird. It is as though there is like a like I'm not a coder, but when I was a kid, I like wrote programs in in basic. Right. And it's just like simple, like text based nonsense. And you can write like a wait command. So you can have the computer do something, then you can tell it to wait a certain number of times or something like that, a certain amount of time. It's as though there's a wait command in the draw for the frames in this game. It's, it's like my GPU isn't producing enough frames to meet VSync. But it's also not working any harder. It's like down in the 60%, sometimes only 40% usage. It's almost like the lower my frame rate is sometimes, the lower my usage is. So the GPU is being told to wait and not work and not draw the next frame. And my CPU is, is way low. My CPU is super overpowered for this game. It's in the 20s, never goes over 30% ever. So... What's up? And I, I want to know. And I, I honestly, what I think is that this is actually happening to everybody. It's just if your hardware is not fast enough to draw the frames and then have time to wait, you're not going to notice. You're just going to observe the bad right. performance. Um, I can force my GPU to be 100% utilized anywhere in Odyssey. I just have to turn my super sampling up until it's drawing like an 8K screen. If I do that, it will be 100% utilized and the frame rate will be like 10 Right, but that's what I have to do. And the thing is, my frame rate doesn't change as I drop that super sampling back down to normal. My utilization goes down below 100, gets down to 60 or sometimes 40, and my frame rate doesn't keep going up. So the GPU is not hitting any limit. It's not hitting its power limit. If you know, it's it's it won't put any more voltage into the GPU. It has nothing else to work on. It's just waiting. So that's the bizarre thing. Um, this, I believe this is happening to everybody, but you're only really going to be able to see it if your computer can draw the frames fast enough that it has the, the opportunity to wait. But I really, I just want the data. I want everybody to, to show this. If you test this and you find that at, at your lowest frame rate in a conflict zone or something, your GPU is 100% utilized, put that in there. Take the screenshot, tell me what GPU you're using, what CPU you're using, I, and care about both. I mean, if your CPU is being locked up, at 100% by this, then that would slow it down too, right? But I, I kind of want to figure out where the line is, somewhere below 3080, obviously. <laughs> but somewhere there's, a, somewhere there's a line, like you're on that pivot point, you know? And I don't care what your graphic settings are, it's whatever you play on, right? Because I just want to know like what you're actually using. And I don't know what I am going to do with this. I don't know why I want this, but it's not right. Something's wrong with this. Something is wrong. And if there's any way that we can help, I want to try. Because if this thing would use my whole GPU, like I'm in a concourse getting, you know, sometimes less than 60 frames. With, and I know I'm sure that sounds luxurious to a lot of people, but I have a 3080, whatever. I paid for computer hardware. You know, it should be running better than this. So if I'm in a concourse in Odyssey and I'm getting 60 frames, sometimes a little less than that, and my GPU usage is at 40%. So I could be getting 60% higher frames if it was just drawing them, right? That's what that's telling me. So I'm pretty sure everybody could be getting more frames, right? Mm. If, this is, if this is, you know, behaving weirdly, if it is waiting between frames that it's, it's asked to draw, then everybody's hardware should be working better. And I did pop into Horizons and in, in test this. I went to... I went and floated around a surface station that was a Horizons station so that I could observe it in both versions of the game. In, um, and I, I did it in VR because I was trying to load my computer down. I turned off all of the frame locking for, for VR. VR is handled differently, but I turned off the, the tricks that make VR work better so that it would just show me the true frame rate. In Odyssey, it's quite low, and the utilization is at like 60%. In Horizons... The frame rate's great, and the utilization is 100%. It does not happen in Horizons. So whatever that difference is, it's something that changed with the game engine for Odyssey, and I don't know what it is. So I would love to have like a bunch of data in this Google form and 
I don't know. Maybe I can share this with them. I don't know. It's possible that this is some information that would be helpful. I mean, there are bugs in this game, like the Thargoid heart bug thing that went on for years and years and years. And eventually they started asking for community help and they got it fixed. I don't know. I don't know if anybody will ever, I don't know if anybody from FDF will ever listen to me about this. I, I don't, you know, Having a podcast does not mean have to have listens to you. What? <laughs> but I will try like crazy. It's coming from a good place. I actually just want to solve some problem because honestly, if my GPU is only being 40 or 60% utilized, that means everybody out there could be getting like a 40 or 60% boost to power if we figured out what this issue is. That would be it, right? I mean, imagine how the oh, be huge. news for this game would change if there's some problem where it's just not using all of its GPU time. Give me a break. So anyway, um, I really worthy, intended that to be like effort. this 30 second long thing and I, I just keep going on and on. Anyway, so there's a link here in the show notes. Um, please take... I'm not asking you to do anything different. Just in your normal gameplay, get to one of those spots where your frame rate drops pretty low. Open up that thing. Open up the task manager. Show me that performance graph. Take a screen grab. Grab. I've got all the key commands in there for you, so you can call it up quickly and submit that. If you know how to do a video, that'd be awesome. You know what to do if you know how to do a video. Just let's let's learn something, hopefully. And I don't know if anything will come of it. That that's all I have. I'm going to shut up about performance after this, I swear. What? Because honestly, no, you're every, not. Time I, every time I tuck into this, and st- I, I stop playing the game and start paying attention to the measurements and stuff, it's depressing. Because I go, <laughs> what, 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 am I, what are you doing, GPU? What are you doing right now? What are you doing? Why are you not working? You know, why are you not being asked to work? Um, if I ignore it for a while and I play, I have fun with my friends. You, so, you paid 30, 80 money gonna, so that you don't have to worry about performance. Yeah. 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 No, so no, just a, F and stop thinking a, about it. As a control, have you hopped into you know another game to see what your utilization is? That there's not any weird throttling oh. going on with your GPU. I mean, have you done a comparison? You know, hopped well, I mean, into Horizons. I mean, literally the well, other version okay. of this yeah. game will fully utilize my well, GPU in the same well, scenario where Odyssey okay. won't. Yeah. So I, I felt yeah, like that sure. was a good. I could. Well, do I that. thought it was the ground stuff, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're flying I mean, those. So, he, yeah, I mean, here's the thing, I. I, it's a it's a thirty eighty. So what am I gonna do? That's gonna it, it can always beat yeah. my monitor refresh rate in every game, except this one. You know, and uh, so mm-hmm. so I could slow it down with VR. VR is is the only thing that can realistically slow it down. Um, I haven't I haven't observed what my utilization was because I've never had any cause to. It's just a known fact that it'll your GPU will be one hundred percent utilized, and then your frame rate will start to drop. That's the order of operations. Because that's that's the way GPUs work. It would keep drawing frames as fast as it could until it hit the power limit. Um, so anyway, do you do you think that's fair? Do testing in Horizons because I actually I didn't turn yes. on any other I, like I could turn on Half Life Alex or something and watch the chart for a while. There's definitely I, yeah. spots in Half Life Alex that slowed down a little bit at the at the resolution and detail I was running it at. Well, I think the the closest possible comparison you can get is performance between Odyssey and yeah. Horizons. That's what I thought. Well, I think, I, honestly, just as much information as you can gather mm-hmm. as possible, you can end yes. up getting, you know, drowning in it and then unable to make sense right. of it because you're comparing apples to oranges. It was just, it was just a thought, but I, I you know, I, if you've, yeah, I, I I always forget when you're talking about the Odyssey, you know, because you're talking about concourse, but you're getting it in your ship to approaching a, a ground right. settlement and Odyssey. Yes, I picked a Horizon settlement and approached it in both games to observe okay. what the difference was. Um, the the screenshots I shared were in a prison concourse, and I, the only reason I captured those is because I thought it was very interesting. There are these moments where Odyssey will suddenly start fully utilizing my GPU. So even Odyssey will do it sometimes, but it's these weird times. Like I'm in that concourse before I book an Apex, it's totally using my GPU and the frame rate's like 170 something. And then I book a, uh, uh, I book a, an Apex in the same place with the same view, the camera pointing in the same direction and the frame rate's 90 and the utilization has dropped way down. 
and I go in the elevator and it goes back up. So so weird. And then that whole Apex trip, if I remember correctly, it was fully utilizing the GPU and the frame rate was like over 300 in space. The menu, the loading menu was like a thousand frames per second. <laughs> Yeah, but we know getting past the main menu is progression in this game. So you <laughs> yeah, need, need good frame rates there yeah. in order to click on the correct so, yeah. thing. Yeah, and, and to, to, like, everybody's seen, when, when you have the spinning hologram of the ship, the loading screen, mm-hmm. there are, there's a hiccup that happens. And I'm pretty sure this happens on every computer because whenever I see them do a stream of a Let's Play or if I see anybody streaming this game, they see the same hiccup that I see. Like, it's turning smoothly, and then it sort of, like, shudders for a second. If you have your performance graph open when that happens, like on a second monitor, if you put it to float on top, your GPU usage drops to zero when that stutter happens. So something else is happening. Now, your CPU usage doesn't spike, or at least mine doesn't. It's something. Like whatever the game is doing, it causes the GPU to just stop drawing frames for a fraction of a second and then resume. Um, Mm. And I'm not saying that's a problem. Like that's a loading screen. That's fine. I don't care. But that's part. It's like a way to if you if you want to see what I'm seeing on any computer, like look at that. I think you're going to see your GPU usage drop to zero in that moment because it's doing something else, and I don't know what. Yeah, I want it's, this. It's mining I, yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, but then your it's usage just, would be at a hundred percent. Well, he's only mining a little bit of Bitcoin. You put it that way. <laughs> so I, yeah, at, to to your point, like you get you get bogged down in information. I didn't mean to talk this long again about this. I want this to be as simple as possible. I want to know CPU GPU just for the sake of of keeping track of where that line is, where these these are weak enough that they never see the thing that I see, and then these GPUs are strong enough that you see the lower than one hundred percent utilization, and just share that. Share that screen so cap. Screen cap with your FPS and your task manager performance tab. And right. So yeah, it's control F shows your FPS in game. It's an in-game counter. It's the same. This is the way I want everybody using the same counter. Use the performance tab in task manager in Windows. Everybody's using the same graphs. It's we're just this is how science works. It has to be repeatable. It all has to be the same measurement. And just go anywhere that your frame rate drops. Dude, I'm not questioning the science. Percenters or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Well, so far it's not science yet because we don't have a sample. We need a sample, and that's where the listeners come in. So, okay. Wait, we're um, smooth brain. Never mind. <laughs> smooth anything brain. else for the show this week? Uh, yeah, I got two things to yeah. before we go to credits. Um, yeah. I've got. Uh, I'm going to bring back the old uh, the movie anniversary thing, so we can feel Sweet. old each week. And this yeah. year's this year's got a a lot of good anniversaries. It, we're kind of a dead man, no man's land for, you know, movie releases though, you know, after Christmas and stuff. So there's not a lot, but as we get into March and then into spring, some really good movies make the list. But but this week I'll throw one out there. 30 years old. Uh, actually, it'll be a Tuesday. So it, it's early next week, four days from now. Um, 30 years old. Fucking Wayne's World, man. 30 oh, years <laughs> old. Oh, <laughs> Party on. Now, if you can listen to Bohemian Rhapsody in the car and not headbang when the, <laughs> when the good yeah. part hits, yeah, there, there's something wrong with you. So, uh, that that's that's the movie anniversary I'm going with this week. Any any memories anybody has of that, or move on to cheese? Move on to yeah. cheese. Yeah, that's fine. Right. <laughs> it's old enough that they've done the uh, sequel where they're old now. Have they right. really? Didn't they do a sequel? A uh, sequel recently of Wayne's World? No, no that was Bill, that and, was Ted. Bill and Ted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was Bill and Ted. Never mind. Okay, kid, it's past oh, your bedtime. Time to, time to scurry along. Oh, crap, it really is. Why didn't anybody <laughs> oh, tell me? Oh, my God. Um, and now uh, this week's cheese, which I think is fitting because we used the analogy of a cracker for what, uh, what Arf gave us with his release this week. I had one of those handy snacks, you know, those Ritz handy snacks that are like four club crackers and the cheese dip side. Yeah. My cheese, okay, of, the, sure. my cheese of the week is the cheese dip side. Now, <laughs> now when I was a kid, Real gourmet stuff here. Well, well, when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was a kid, you'd, you'd get the thing and then there'd be that little uh, red rectangle that you'd use to spread the cheese. That's not mm-hmm. in there anymore. You got to dip the cracker. Like it's like, it's what? A shit. Which I'm against. They Doesn't need to put break? the little knife back the in. Of course, it fucking enough. breaks. Yeah. Oh, oh, Jesus, it's ridiculous. That, and that uh, dip by the is way, like plastic. So well, it's not. Yeah, exactly. Soft. 
But, you know, I'm sure it's a recycling thing. Oh, my God, they were going to kill the earth with that uh, red I'm, cheese I'm spreaders. sure it's a cost of plastic thing. But <laughs> I, not that that matters to me because I eat three of the crackers, then use all the cheese on one cracker. So it, it, doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. But there was something I was going to point out to my daughter on the thing because back when I was in high school, we made fun of it because if you read the ingredients, it wasn't cheese or cheese spread in in the other cup like now if you read the directions it's called cheese dip well you're dipping the cracker in there really? back when i was a kid we mocked it because it was processed cheese food it, <laughs> it was yeah, literally I called that. cheese food so i i'm disturbed that it's no longer processed cheese food and it makes me sad but that's this week's cheese of the week the processed cheese food that comes in a handy snack so everybody has to go eat handy yeah. snacks this week you're welcome ritz Amen. Yeah. What what good choice. Watch out. Just like for an interesting thing. Look at the names of the foods on a lot of these processed foods. Like like if they don't contain enough of some key ingredient to legally be called like ice cream, for example. If they don't have enough cream, watch for things that are called like uh dairy desserts or something like that. <laughs> right. Or right. or like ice a, dessert a, product. Yeah, or like a crunch bar, the candy bar. It's like called a, a chocolatey bar. Chocolate-y. It can be called chocolate. There's not enough cocoa in it. <laughs> so, stuff like that. It's fun well, that's to like, see how they name things. And that's a communication plan. Yeah. Well, that's like <laughs> pota- uh, Pringles. Pringles can't be called potato chips. Mm-hmm. They're like oh, potato crisps or something, what they have to call right. it. Well, that's just They're, British. It's powdered potatoes repressed into that shape oh, right I think exactly oh, yeah because they can't get the shape without yeah okay it's not a natural shape man well so that's just like <laughs> when you that's that's like a cultured marble countertop mm-hmm. right yeah. so they, those are just cultured potato chips <laughs> yep <laughs> yep so there's a marketing a, opportunity they missed yep, yep. Yeah. They, they cut you. countertops thin enough we can eat them that's what a pringle <laughs> is <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, um, Tato and resin aside, I guess that's going to do it for the Loose Screws podcast for having nothing to talk about. We sure, did, yeah. we sure did talk for a, a long, long time. <laughs> My apologies to everyone's ears. Um, if you like the show for some reason, please rate and review. And if you didn't like the show, which is totally understandable, please just stay away and don't We hope you die. Yeah. Wait, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. Oh, 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 gosh. <laughs> Give Beep, that out. Beep that up. <laughs> Give, Give us stars out of irony. <laughs> Give us a five star review or leave. Um, join us on Discord at discord.io slash loose screws and check out the merch store at loosescrews.com for mugs, t shirts, hoodies, and more. Thanks for joining me, Chig, Data, and Nurgle. I'm Commander J on Tracks. Also, my soundboard was here the whole time, which is a Discord user because yeah, that's Craig how I made live. it. Craig <laughs> made it the whole Craig's time. a survivor. Yeah, Craig's got uh, the the Discord robot is under new management. He he got help. He didn't want to do it on his own anymore. He solicited help and he got it. And things have been turning over. They're doing a bunch of updates over there, and things seem to be going really well. So I think Craig's around for the long haul. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Maybe they'll maybe they'll be around I, long enough for Discord to finally get their shit together and add a recording function that's native. <laughs> Good I lord! I never, I never, I never doubted Craig for a second myself. Really? Yeah. Well, Data's lack of observational skills aside, we're going to (laughs) close down the podcast for this week. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And remember to stay loose and stay screwy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.